Hey guys, my name is Dylan. Uh, I'm just gonna talk about how I pick my puppies. Um, and really, I pick the litter and not the pup, and I let the pup pick me. And I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that. Um, I am so confident in the dame and the sire, because I've done my homework, that I'm fine with any puppy that I get in that litter. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is when I go to pick the pup, if I have the opportunity, I'm gonna sit down, and whatever puppy comes up and shows me the most attention and stays with me the most, and I'm gonna pet each one evenly, you know, I'm not gonna show one special attention, but whichever one stays with me and wants to be with me is the one I'm gonna pick. And so I do that because I feel like if the dog already wants to be with me, then it's gonna be easier to train. Uh, that's just a simple reason. That's, that's my picking philosophy, that's just how I do it. Um, and it hasn't proven me wrong yet, so. The, uh, how I know that the, the Siren Dame are going to produce, these are the things that I'm looking for. I'm looking for uh, the Siren Dame to have all genetic and uh, health tests, hips, elbows, eyes that the breed uh, club, the main club recommends. You can find that on their websites uh, for the breed that you're looking for. Usually it's hips, elbows, eyes, and uh, a DNA test is what I'm looking for on that. Now, there are always exceptions to that rule, but for the most part, I want all that done. The other thing... Uh, that I'm looking for is I'm looking for uh, field champion titles, uh, NFC, AFC, FC, those all the way throughout the pedigree as well as master hunter, or senior hunter. Those, I'm looking for that in a pedigree. And the reason I'm looking for that is especially in my breed, which is the English Springer Spaniels, because we have a big divide in our breed where you have uh, bench bred and, and field bred and they look like completely different dogs. Like you, you wouldn't think they were the same breed. Um, and so I wanna make sure that I don't have mixed lines. For me, uh, personally, I just don't wanna do that. Some of them can be great. But for me, if you're breeding a great field bred dog, it's gonna have the off switch. There's no reason to, to breed bench lines into there to make them calmer. Uh, a lot of times it can backfire on you. And uh, for me, there are some great mixed breeds dogs, mixed bench and field dogs. But for me with the Springer Spaniel, if you get good lines from field bred dogs, they have the best off switch uh, out there and are the perfect house companion and field companion. So what I'm looking for is uh, the, the FC and the, and the Master Hunter throughout the pedigree. All right, not every dog has to have it, but I don't want to see it like all of the championship titles are on the great, great grandparents and then they have nothing else because that doesn't tell me much. Okay, so... The other thing that I'm going to look for and that I'm going to look for in the parents specifically is I'm going to make sure that the parents retrieve naturally and enthusiastically. And what I mean by that is they have a nice, calm hold on a bumper or bird and they bring it in with enthusiasm and they go out to retrieve it with enthusiasm. Um, and that tells me that the dog is probably a natural retriever, even if it's been through force fetch. Now, I would rather the dog not have been through force fetch and just to see it retrieve naturally like that. Um, but if it does, it doesn't matter because you can usually tell either way. If a dog had to be force fetch because it wasn't retrieving great, it's going to look beat up. It's going to look like it's being forced to do it. And you can tell it's going to move slowly. It's going to come back in slowly um, and that kind of stuff. So... The other thing that I'm going to look for is I'm going to make sure that when the dog is waiting to be sent on a retrieve, it does not whine. Uh, if, the dog's, it has to, if the dog's asked to sit still, it does not whine. So I want to know those things. I want to ask the owner, like, hey, when you're waiting to go hunt, are you, when the dog's in the kennel, when the dog's in the crate, when the dog's in the back of the car, is it whining? Is it barking? And when I pull in to go check out the dogs, I want to make sure that, hey, look, there's not, uh, the dog isn't incessantly barking at me. If it barks a few times, that's, that's okay, as long as it will shut up after I get there. I don't want the dog to continuously bark at me. That's a pet peeve of mine. I don't want that at my house. I don't want to deal with that. I want dogs that do not whine. I also duck hunt a lot. I can't have a dog in a blind whine, whine, whine. Uh, it, is, it is my pet peeve. It'll ruin my hunt for me. So, and I believe that is mainly genetic. I believe you can cause that with training, but there are a lot of dogs out there that just have it genetically. Uh, and so, and you're going to have to fight genetics on that, which is really hard to do. And so those are the things that I look for within the breed to pick my, uh, litter of what I want. Uh, and you know, I kind of know some bloodlines that have that, and I know, but I'm not going to mention those on here. Um, you can look at my pedigrees and see what's in there and then go from there if you want to do that. Uh, but the other thing I will say is if you are a new owner and you're not planning on training your dog yourself, 
So if, if I'm, if I'm coming in this and I'm not a dog trainer, I'm just saying, Hey, I'm going to send my dog off regardless. And you know this before you even get the pup, what you need to do is you need to go ahead and find your trainer. This will be the biggest piece of advice to you. Go ahead and find your trainer and ask them where to get the pup from. Because if you are, um, because they'll, they'll know what lines they like. They know what lines they want to train. And they may have a pup for you already. And it'd be better to get one off of them that they could train up for you because they know exactly how to train that dog. They know how to get the best results out of those dogs. If you go and go get a dog that is completely different than what they like to train, um, then your results are going to be slower. You may have to pay more in training fees because it's going to take longer. Um, and it may not be the type of dog or, or perform to the type of level that you want or, or that you're looking to hunt for. And if you call your breeder and you tell them, hey, look, this is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a dog that hunts close, that's easy going, that's not going to want in the blind, and that's going to do this. He might be able to tell you, hey, look, you need to get from these lines because I know these will perform. Here's a litter. Here's a pup right here. Wait on that pup and send them to me. And that's what you need to uh, if you already know you're going to send your dog off, that's the easiest way to get a great dog because that uh, that uh, trainer is going to know where to where to go look. And so I highly recommend that go talk to the trainer that you're going to get to train your dog. Find your trainer first if you're going to send your dog off or even if you're going to come for one-on-one -on -one handling lessons. So if you're going to go to a trainer just to get advice, ask the trainer, find the trainer first. Uh, that will make your life 10 times easier and you'll probably get a better dog than you would looking on your own. Uh, but that's all.